This is an e-waste management plant, a place where all kinds of discarded electronic items end up. Honestly, I was surprised after visiting this plant. There were hundreds of discarded computers here. People were breaking these computers down, sometimes with their hands, sometimes with machines. Instead of just throwing them away and burning them, they plan to extract crucial elements such as aluminium and even gold from it. This e-waste management plant that you see on your screen is run by Karosambhav. Karosambhav is an organization that provides services that help in building a circular economy. Circular economy sounds like a complicated term but it's actually very simple. It simply means that instead of letting discarded items become waste, we should try and bring them back into the economy by reusing them or recycling them. I was really curious to understand how this plant actually works. The first and the most important step in treating e-waste is collection. Because if you're not able to collect e-waste, how will you even treat it? For this, Karo Sambhav has connected with a large number of people on the ground who collect e-waste from homes and small shops. They even organize collection drives and often collect discarded items in bulk. But despite their efforts, a lot of e-waste still goes untreated in India. This is probably the biggest problem for e-waste recyclers in India. For me, the biggest impediment will always be collection, collection, collection. Because collection is one time, so there will be enough people who may want to invest in recycling. How do you end up collecting the sheer amount of products which are distributed? Just the sheer amount of products. Over 100 million pieces of mobile phone are put on the market every year. And, you know, there are all types of channels from a very nearby store to an online you know, people delivering now in 10 minutes. You have all types of distribution. Now think of how does collection work? Can you really think anything on the collection side? Yeah, I will recycle it. You will, you know, you will have to think about it. And people will get stuck. And that's the problem. In today's rate, collection is minuscule compared to the products put on the market because channels don't exist. Once this electronic waste is collected, it comes to the e-waste management plant. The plant that we are in specializes in managing discarded computers. Let me show you how. You have to break down the CPU to get different elements. And because every CPU is different, you have to do this process by hand. It's actually hard to imagine a machine that could open all these different types of CPUs. These skilled women and men work on opening the CPUs. They have become very fast at this because of the sheer number of times that they have to perform this every day. Once the CPU is open, you have to take out different items from this. You get a hard disk, a CD drive, fans, wires, the motherboard, power supply unit and more. If you look at these items closely, you'll realize that these items are very complicated in themselves. These items need to be broken down further. For example, if you look at wires, you have to remove this outer plastic coating to get the metal that's inside of it. This particular machine helps in this process. You put plastic wires on one side and you get metal on the other. Now if you look at a motherboard, it's a very complicated piece of tech. You can extract things like RAM, processor, lithium-ion batteries, heatsink and more. The heatsink is often made of aluminium and Koto Sambhav uses a furnace to turn it into aluminium ignite. This ignit can now be used as raw material for making other products. Other items from the motherboard like RAM, processor and lithium ion batteries are separated from the motherboard at this plant and sent to other vendors and plants, where precious elements such as gold, platinum, copper and palladium are extracted from this. Once you go deeper into the process, you realize the kind of possibilities that exist in terms of reusing and repurposing items. For example, even if this computer is useless on its own, when it is broken down into parts, these parts become very useful. Now all this means that we have to produce less new materials now and things that could have become waste come back into the economy. Another important thing I learned here was that one plant cannot manage everything. So there will be things that one e-waste management plant cannot manage. But instead of throwing those items away, they can be sent to people who know how to manage them. Recycling e-waste in India is a collaborative effort. 
It starts with on-ground collection and ends with collaboration of big and small businesses who are helping with reducing our waste. Who are helping us save the environment. So when we talk of e-waste and recycling, you know, MSMEs are going to be at the heart of this problem. If thousands of materials and components are required to create a product, for recycling those, you know, hundreds of materials, you need those different sorts of players with their unique expertise. So dismantling is a component, let's say magnet is a recycling to a printed circuit has gone to someone else. One recycler pays up kuch chalage and magically was a kuch karina names. Technically, metallurgically. Uh, possible he approach. 